Oh, excuse me, no doubt. Hi, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, a little bit windy on the microphone here on this uh, <coughs> gorgeous Easter Sunday. It is Easter Sunday. It is the last day of March. That would be Sunday, March 31st, 2024. As March came in like a lamb and is going out like a lamb in uh, Donnellan, Florida. So uh, I thought about maybe I should take a day off of doom scrolling and uh, or doom slanging, doom slanging today uh, here on Easter Sunday. But you know I. Uh, started thinking we need, you know, thinking about Easter, things like resurrection and, and world peace and the Prince of Peace rolling away the stone and all of that good stuff. Uh, so, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to skip over this. We're, we're letting Sandy at Environmental Coffee House, she is taking this one, uh, is doom slang making us all numb? So if you want to hear this article from Esquire magazine, is doom slang making us all numb? I think that Sandy is going to uh, do an Easter Sunday show about doom slang. I guess if she can uh, stop bed rotting Sandy, can you stop bed rotting and uh, give us, teach us some new doom slang like uh, dumpster fire? I do love that term, dumpster fire. But anyway, we're not here to talk about, well, I guess we are kind of here to talk about dumpster fires here on Easter Sunday. So uh, this is my pick for world peace and resurrection and I'm gonna let the little dog you can go get why don't you just go get that lizard like that please lizard hunting instead of doom slanging my little dog is lizard hunting anyway we're gonna go over there to uh, counter punch which I need to spend more time see what those on the minds of the lefties over there at counter punch this fellow, I've uh, shared several of his <coughs> essays over the years, and he's going to get our Easter Sunday sermon. This is Tom Englehart. Tom Englehart, his website, I think, is called Tom's Dis Dispatch or something like that. You probably know Tom. So what's on your mind here on this Easter? Take it away. Tom Englehart... <coughs> A slow-moving World War III. I'm not sure I would use the term slow-moving. <laughs> Looks like a, a rapidly approaching World War III in, uh, on all kinds of uh, metaphorical levels. Anyway, this is how Tom, Tom Englehart is reading the tea leaves. I've been describing this world of ours, such as it is, for almost 23 years at Tom Dispatch. I've written my way through three and a half presidencies. God save us, it could be four in November. I have viewed from a grave, and I mean that word, grave distance, America's endlessly disastrous wars of this century. I have watched the latest military budget hit almost $900 billion, undoubtedly on its way toward a cool trillion dollars in the years to come. <clears throat> While years ago, the whole national security budget, though insecurity, would be a better word, soared to well over the trillion dollar mark. <clears throat> I've lived <coughs> my whole <coughs> life in an imperial power. 
once in the wake of the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, it was even, quote, the lone superpower, the last great power on planet Earth, or so its leaders believed. I then watched how in a world without great power dangers, it continued to invest ever more of our tax dollars into our military. A peace dividend. Who needed that? And yet, in the decades that followed, by far the most expensive military on planet Earth could not manage to win a single war no less its global war on terror. In fact, in this century, while fighting vain or losing conflicts across significant parts of the planet, it slowly but all too obviously began to go down the tubes, or perhaps I mean, if you don't mind a few mixed metaphors, come apart at the seams. And it never seems to end, does it? Imagine that 32 years after the U.S. became the last superpower on planet Earth in a devastating kind of political chaos, this country might indeed re-elect a man who imagines himself running a future American dictatorship. His very word for it even if publicly at least, just for a single day. And yes, in 2024, as chaos blooms on the American political scene, the world itself continues to be remarkably at war. Think of war, in fact, as humanity's middle name in both Ukraine and Gaza with offshoots in Lebanon and Yemen. Meanwhile, this country's now 22-year-old war on terror struggles on its own, struggles on in its own devastating fashion with threats of worse to come in plain sight. After all, 88 years after two atomic bombs were dropped on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki to end World War II, nukes seemed to be making a comeback. Not that they were ever really gone, of course. Thank you, Kim and Vlad. I'm thinking of how North Korean leader Kim Jong-un implicitly threatened, I don't know if if it was implicitly or not, anyway, uh, threatened to nuke his non-nuclear southern neighbor recently, but also far more significantly how, in his own version of a State of the Union address to his people, Russian President Vladimir Putin very publicly threatened to employ nukes from his country's vast arsenal assumedly tactical ones, some of which are more powerful than the atomic bombs that ended World War II. Should any European country think France send their troops into Ukraine? And don't forget that amid all of this, my own country's military eternally hiking its defense budget continues to prepare in a big time fashion for a future war with, yes, China. Of course, that country is in turn rushing to upgrade its own nuclear arsenal and the rest of its military machine as well. Only recently, for instance, the U.S. and Japan held joint military maneuvers that, as they openly indicated for the first time, were aimed at preparing for just such a future conflict with China, and you can't get much more obvious 
than that. Oh, and when it comes to war, I haven't even mentioned, for instance, the devastating civil war in Sudan that has nothing to do with any of the major powers. Yes, we humans just can't seem to stop making war, while to the tune of untold trillions of dollars globally, preparing for ever more of it. And the truly strange thing is this. It seems to matter not at all that the very world on which humanity has done so forever and a day is now itself being unsettled in a devastating war that no military of any sort, armed in any fashion, will ever be able to deal with. <clears throat> Let's admit it, we humans have always had a deep urge to make war. Of course, logically speaking, we should not continue to do so, and not just for all the obvious reasons, but because we're on a planet that cannot take it anymore. Yes, making war or simply preparing for it means putting staggering amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, and so quite literally making war on the planet itself. But as both history and the present moment seem to indicate, all too decisively, we just can't stop ourselves. <clears throat> In the process, while hardly noticing, it seems as if we have become ever more intent on conducting a global war on this planet itself. Our weapons in that war, and <clears throat> in their own long-term fashion, they're likely to prove no less devastating than nuclear arms have, you know, of course, been fossil fuels. I'm thinking, of course, of coal, oil, and natural gas, and the greenhouse gases that drilling for them, and the use of them emit in staggering quantities, even in what passes for peacetime. <clears throat> in the previous century, of course, there were two devastating world wars, World War I and World War II. They were global events that in total killed more than 100 million of us in devastated parts of the planet. But here's this truly strange thing while local and regional wars continue in this century in a striking fashion, few consider the way we are loading the atmosphere with carbon dioxide and methane while in the process heating this planet disastrously as a new kind of world war. Think of climate change, in fact, as a kind of slow motion World War III. After all, it could not be more global or, in the end, more destructive than a world war of the worst sort. I'm sure Book Hermit is squirming about this point in Tom's article. <clears throat> and, unlike the present wars in Gaza and Ukraine, which, even thousands of miles away, continue to be headline-making events, the war on this planet normally gets surprisingly little attention in much of the media. In fact, in 2023, a year that set striking global heat records month by month from June to December and was also the hottest year ever recorded, the major TV news programs of ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox News actually cut 
their coverage of global warming significantly according to Media Matters for America. I live in New York City, which like most of the rest of the planet, set a heat record for 2023. And uh, of course, uh, for half of the year, I live four hours away in Ithaca, New York, where we had the coolest, rainiest, greenest summer I have ever spent in my entire life in the summer of 2023. I, I am only... <laughs> hoping that the summer of 2024 is as cool and beautiful and pleasant as last summer. But I guess four hours uh, away from me in New York City, uh, where Tom lives, set a heat record for 2023. In addition, the winter we just passed through was the winter we just passed through was a record one for warmth. Uh, I, I don't know. Every time I've checked the uh, the weather forecast at Bugs of, in a Jar Farm. Uh, anyway, I'm glad I'm in Florida. If that is a record warm winter in New York, I'm glad I'm a snowbird. Anyway. <clears throat> And I began writing this piece on a set of days in early March when temperatures in New York City also hit records in the mid-60s and when on March, uh, on March 14th, not April 14th, May 14th, or even June 14th, it clocked 70 plus degrees Fahrenheit. I was walking outside that afternoon with my shirt sleeves rolled up, my sweater in my backpack, and my spring jacket tied around my waist, feeling uncomfortably hot in my blue jeans, even on the shady side of the street. And yes, if my wife and I, as my wife and I did recently, you were to walk down the park near where we live, you would see that the daffodils are already blooming wildly as are other flowers while the first trees are budding, including a fantastic all-purple one that is burst out fully. All of this in a fashion that might once have seemed normal sometime in April. And yes, some of what I am describing is certainly quite beautiful in, a sh in the short run, but under it lies increasingly grim reality when it comes to extreme and extremely hot weather. <clears throat> well, I was... I anyway, I think he's... Uh, may then he talks about the uh, wildfires in Texas and Chile. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, I, I, I think we, uh, we, we've heard it before, Tom. <clears throat> we are, in other words, increasingly on a different planet though you would hardly know it amid the madness of our moment. I mean, imagine this. Russia, whose leader Vladimir Putin clearly does not consider climate change a significant issue, is on pace to achieve an oil drilling record for the second year in a row. But of course, that he means for Russia because, of course, it is uh, Joe Biden, who Tom never mentions in this story, has drilled a hell of a lot more oil uh, this year than Vladimir Putin or could in his wildest dreams that under Joe Biden's watch uh, that the United States is pumping more oil than any country in the history of humanity. I guess uh, Tom Englehart 
I, I guess he did not get that email, but my guess also is that Tom Englehart is voting for Joe Biden. I'm just taking a wild guess. But anyway, but but it's that the what's true for Biden, you you better believe that Vladimir Putin is jealous as hell. Uh, then let's go over to China. China, despite installing far more green power than any other country, has also been burning more coal than all the other nations combined and set global records for building new coal-fired power plants as we talked about that story on, uh, on Friday night and India uh, will soon overpower China as having uh, the most new, brand new coal-fired power plants uh, on, you know, in the world as coal usage hit a record in 2023. Oh, uh, okay, here's the Biden. This, this is, uh, <laughs> you know, come on, Tom, be honest. Meanwhile, the third great power on this planet, that would be us, despite having a president dedicated to doing something about climate change, okay, is still the larger, the largest exporter of natural gas and continues to produce oil at a distinctly record pace. So there is uh, Tom Englehart's president dedicated to doing something about climate change is overseeing uh, fossil fuel production at a record pace. <clears throat> And don't forget the five giant fossil fuel companies, BP, Shell, Chevron, ExxonMobil, and Total Energies, which in 2023 produced oil, made profits, and rewarded shareholders at, you guessed it, a record pace while the major petro states of our world are still, according to The Guardian, quote, planning expansions that would blow the planet's carbon budget twice over, close quote. In sum, then, this world of ours only grows more dangerous by the year. And I have not even mentioned artificial intelligence, have I? As Michael Clare has written in an analysis for the Arms Control Association, the dangers of AI and other emerging military technologies are likely to, quote, expand into the nuclear realm by running up the escalation ladder or by blurring the distinction between a conventional and nuclear attack, close quote. In other words, human war making could become both more inhuman and worse at the same time. Now add just one more factor into the global equation. America's European and, A and Asian uh, allies see U.S. leadership dominant since 1945, experiencing a potentially epic-ending terminal failure as the global Pax Americana, otherwise known as the American Peace Plan, that had all 
too little to do with peace is crumbling. Or do I mean overheating? What they see, you know, in, in anybody looking at the, uh, at, at the election, what they see, in fact, is two elderly men locked in an ever more destructive interlooking electoral knife fight with one of them warning ominously that if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the country. Now, Tom knows uh, that that quote was taken out of context, but it was such a great quote. Uh, and if he, meaning Donald Trump, is not victorious, here is Trump's further prediction. Quote, I don't think you're going to have another election, or certainly not an election that is meaningful, close quote, as if this election means a goddamn thing. Of course, were he to be victorious, as he will be, the same could be true, especially since he has promised from his first day in office, you know, to emulate Joe Biden, which is to, quote, drill, 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 which at this point in our history is by definition to declare war on the planet. So I guess if Joe Biden's declaration of war on the planet uh, is not enough, I, I guess we will let uh, Donald Trump just pick up the drilling rigs where Joe Biden uh, left off. <coughs> Unfortunately, Donald Trump is not alone. <coughs> All too sadly, we humans clearly have trouble focusing on the world we actually inhabit. We would prefer to fight wars instead. Consider that the definition, not just consider that the definition, not just of imperial decline, but of decline period in the age of climate change, and yet it is barely news. And uh, although you would never hear it mentioned in this article, if the amount of coverage that climate change uh, is barely news, how about the coverage of uh, overpopulation and, of course, overshoot? When was the last time you heard the word overshoot in any mainstream media coverage? Which climate change is one little bitty symptom of, you know. I mean, I have a lot of respect for uh, Tom Englehart. I wish he would do a little more honest calling out on, uh, on Joe Biden. But, uh, you know, Tom Englehart is as guilty as uh, as any other clueless moron. Uh, he, I guess Tom Englehart uh, has never heard the term overshoot either. At least I don't ever remember seeing the word overshoot in any article Tom Englehart has ever written in 32 years. If I am incorrect on that, could someone please send me the link? Because I would like to know uh, his opinion of it. But anyway, all in all, I think that's a pretty good uh, encapsulation of the state of the planet as we all uh, celebrate the Prince of Peace rolling away the stone. Uh, roll away the stone. What will we do in 2,000 years? <laughs> uh, 
as Leon Russell would say. All right. Well, I got to go find my little lizard chasing dog while I still can. Bye, guys.